a fixed income guys um, once more good morning or good afternoon right so we have a test and I'm kind of on, uh, on videos video recording on steroids so what I want to, to talk about now right is reinforced preparation and duration concept Let me, uh, let me remind you what we talked about in class, right? So if we have a bond and we have a yield of the bond, right, we can always decompose it into interest rate, right, which is basically the government curve, plus the auction adjusted spread, right? So we said that we create the auction adjusted spread by looking on, on the bond looking on its maturity, right, and then looking on the corresponding interest rate and then basically subtracting one from the other, right. So for example, if I have a 10-year GE bond, okay, and it has a yield, let's say, of 3%, okay, and then my corresponding treasury, which is a 10-year treasury, right, a 10-year interest rate curve, 10-year treasury, will be, for example, 2.2%, okay? Then my option adjusted spread will be 3 minus 2.2, right? 3% minus 2.2 is going to be 0.8% or 80 basis points. Now, what I want to know, right? What I want to know, I want to know the, once again, just like with durations, right? What I want to know is the sensitivity of my bond, of the price of the bond, to the option adjusted spread. So in other words, by how much in percentage terms my, my price will move, right, if OS moves by 1%. And what I said, what we said in class, that in the simplest case of zero coupon bond, okay, my maturity of the bond, divide by 1 plus the yield, right, is going to be equal to the, you know, to the spread duration. And it also will be equal to the duration. Now, when is it different, right? So the, what I spend may a lot of time in class, or not a lot of time, by some time, right, is explaining when it is different, right? And I said, right, that it is different, for example, for floaters. Okay, because what happens with floaters, okay? So floaters, right, just to remind you, you have a LIBOR plus a margin. Right? So for example, if your LIBOR is 0.225% and your margin is 2%, okay, you are going to get a coupon of 225% of your principal in the next year or in the next three months, okay? Now, if the LIBOR, if the Fed hikes tomorrow, the LIBOR goes to 0.5%, Okay, you are going to get as a coupon as 2.5%, right? So the, the floater reflects the changes in the interest rate. And it does it every three months. So you can think about a floater in the following way. Every time you issue a bond with a new coupon, right? And this coupon is going to, de to, to, to depend on the LIBOR, which is it now. So basically today I'm issuing three months of bank today once again, I'm issuing three months, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And every time I'm issuing with three months, so say I have uh, uh, 25 basis points, right? So it's 225, then three months is going to be 2.5, right? And then it's going to continue that way. So the fact that I'm doing it on a three month basis, right? You can think about floaters as being basically a sequence of bonds which you issue every time with new coupon, right? But the maturity of those bonds, right? The actual maturity of those bonds will be the maturity of the floater. And that's the key. So if the floater matures, let's say, in 2025, for example, here, right? And you are, and you are in this timeline. Every time you will issue Every three months, you will issue a new bond, which will have a new coupon, which will mature in the same date, right? So the, 
So it's going, you know, so it's 10 years or 9 years now, then it will be 5 years in 2020, etc., etc., etc. Now, in this particular case, it's very interesting, right? You can see maybe, and I do not want, uh, you know, a, a very complicated calculations, right? But you can see why, right? The floater has a duration of three months because every three months, right, the payment is adjusted. I mean, the floater is sensitive to interest rates changes only, only in the three months period. Once you hit the three months period, bang, you issue a new one that will incorporate, right, the, the LIBOR movement, right? So you don't, after three months, you don't have uh, any sensitivity to LIBOR movement, right? So every three months you have, or if you have every three months you issue a new bond, okay, with a new payment, you can think about, okay, what is my next maturity, right? My next maturity is going to be basically uh, this bond, but, you know, but the quote unquote the, the real maturity, right, is going to be in 2025. So every every three months you basically have a bond where you update, right, the LIBOR, the LIBOR payments. You update the LIBOR payments, right? Because you update the LIBOR payments, the duration of this guy will be basically up to three months, right? But the spread duration. Well. The spread duration will depend on the maturity, on the real maturity of the floater. Right? It depends on the real maturity of the floater because the spread movements are not adjusted in the payments. Okay, they are not adjusted in the payments. So the spread duration, say in a bond that matures in 225, will be more or less eight years or whatever you know, whatever whatever. It depends on the coupon. So we are not going to talk about that. Maybe we'll do in class an example of how to do it, of how to calculate those kind of, uh, you know, things. But uh, for that, we need to talk about swaps, and I don't want to get there. Okay? So once again, to summarize, for zero coupon bond and for bullet bonds, spread durations and durations are very close. When they are different, however, right, is in this case of floaters, or, you know, in the case of what we call the credit default swaps. Okay? And they are different in the case of floaters, okay? Because in a floater, you have kind of two components. The interest rate component is getting adjusted every three months. The option adjusted spread component is not getting adjusted, right? The spread, the op if, if the bond moves, it will be, it, it, you know, if the interest rate moves, you will see, you will adjust the payment or, you know, if the LIBOR moves, you will adjust the payment in three months, right? So if the, if the once again, right, if it's, uh, 225 25 basis points, but in three months it's 50 basis points, right? So you will adjust the coupon, right? So the payment will be adjusted, right? So the price is going to go back to par, for example. However, okay, for spread durations, when the spread is moving, right, you're not, you know, you're not adjusting it. I mean, the spread moves, bang, the, the price of the bond drops, and you're done, okay? Now, before I let you go, Here's a small example of how this is actually manifested. Say I have a spread duration of five years, right? And my duration is 0 0.25. If my, if my spread moves, let's say, by 100 basis points, right? This is a spread. And my, you know, the OS, and my, uh, and my uh, LIBOR moves by say 25 basis points, okay? How it is going to be reflected? So the 25 basis points will contribute minus 0 0.25 times 0 0.25%, right? This is go going to come from the LIBOR. And then you have another portion that comes from the spread, which is five years times, right? So it's minus because it goes up times 1%, okay? So you see that this is actually dominates this. I mean, this is like, I don't know what it is, right? But just do the calculation, you know, at home. All right? So I'll see you on Monday. We'll continue to hammer on this stuff, and, you know, hopefully you'll get it. You'll get it. I mean, this is really, really the crux of fixed income. I mean, that's how I'm thinking about it. I know that we are, you know, people, are, other people think about this differently. Okay? Thank you very much, and have a great day.